Or an elegant lady to put on quite a show. The curtain rises on surprises and it's on for young and old. Share a smile, shed a tear, leave them laughing when you go. Take a bow, dear old Melbourne, you put on quite a show. National News on relay to these stations throughout Victoria and interstate with Alona Commissar. Good evening. Among tonight's main stories, the Prider is met by angry demonstrators in South Australia. The defence completes its case in the Chamberlain murder trial, and a crippled cargo ship is on its way to Melbourne after demolishing a beacon in Launceston. Two unionists have appeared in court in Wyala in South Australia following angry demonstrations against the Prime Minister. Mr Fraser was campaigning for what could be a run-up to action, as Ken Begg reports. Mr Fraser still has time to risk an early election, but only... And any decision to go will have to be made here first. Any decision to go will have to be made here first. But only after testing the electorate out here, Wyala is one of South Australia's so-called Iron Triangle cities. And like most mining towns, it's been hard hit by the recession. <laughs> These workers and their families are only the tip of Australia's unemployment iceberg, and they're angry. It was the same story at a nearby construction site. Times are tough, and some of these workers couldn't hide their feelings. <laughs> we, can we get a 1.6 billion handshake? <laughs> yeah, ma'am. Well, 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 that might not be atypical of the national mood, but it's a sure sign that some of Australia's growing unemployed aren't going to be a silent majority at the next federal election. With the South Australian election just two weeks away, Labor leader Bill Hayden was in Adelaide. This summit of Labor leaders was all about preparing tactics for the South Australian and possibly a federal election. And it was also all about being seen. The National Party doesn't want an early election, nor do the majority of Mr Fraser's senior Liberal colleagues. And that's probably why the Prime Minister might just be tempted to risk an election on, say, Saturday, December the 11th. Ken Begg in Canberra for Seven National News. Meanwhile, Sir Philip Lynch today officially ended 16 years as a federal politician. A member of Sir Philip's staff handed the formal resignation to the Speaker Sir Billy Sneddon in his Melbourne office just before midday. This means there will now be a by-election for Sir Philip's seat of Flinders in about a month's time. The Bass Strait cargo ship, the Townsville Trader, is tonight limping into Port Melbourne with three holes in its hull. The ANL vessel, which transports produ produce between Melbourne and northern Tasmanian ports, struck a 15-foot beacon while leaving the port of Bell Bay near Launceston yesterday afternoon. The Townsville Trader struck the Bombay Rock beacon at 5.30 yesterday afternoon. The steel beacon, which stands 15 feet above the waterline, was demolished. The hull of the trader was holed in its ballast, fuel oil and drain tanks. Water in the fuel tank caused the master to shut down the starboard engine, resulting in the trader making the Bass Strait crossing on one engine at half speed. It is expected to berth at Webb Dock by 11 o'clock tonight. The Townsville trader is exempt from carrying pilots in the Tamar River and ANL spokesmen say there will be an inquiry into the cause of the incident. ANL reported no mechanical failure at the time the ship struck the beacon, although reports from Tasmania suggest there may have been an engine failure. The master and crew of 38 aboard the stricken vessel have not been injured. The trader will be repaired at Duke and Orr's dry dock and its sister ship, the Sydney Trader, will be recommissioned onto the Bass Strait route and continue the service without interruption. The Pope has added his voice to appeals for a solution to the Middle East crisis. He made his appeal after meeting Lebanese President Amin Jamal at the Vatican today. During the unofficial audience with the Pope, President Jamal was described as a leader who could make an active contribution to solving the Middle East problems. Meanwhile, in Melbourne, members of the Lebanese community have begun a three-day vigil in memory of Bashir Jamal, President-elect of Lebanon, before his assassination last month. Bashir Jamal was assassinated on the 14th of September, nine days before assuming the presidency. His brother, Amin, was elected president a short time later. 
The Australian Lebanese Association has organised the vigil in MacArthur Square in Carlton. It will end on Sunday with a memorial service at St Patrick's Cathedral. Several politicians, including Bob Hawke, will attend the service. A group of Lebanese teenagers started the vigil tonight with a prayer for Lebanon and Bashir Jamal. According to the organisers, Jamal will be sadly missed because he represented peace and hope for Lebanon. Earlier in the city square, members of Melbourne's Polish community held a memorial service to the young Polish steelworker who was killed during clashes with the security forces following the banning of the Solidarity Trade Union. They laid the now traditional floral cross in the square while families carrying candles looked on. 300 people, many wearing Solidarity badges, sang national songs as the cross was laid on the ground. Many in the crowd this evening were former members of Solidarity and they vowed to keep fighting against the Polish regime to prove that the Union was the pride and hope of the Polish people and that it would live on despite being banned by the Polish government. In Northern Ireland, hopes that the latest round of elections would aid the struggle for peace appear to have been dashed. Sinn Féin, the political wing of the IRA, set out to prove Catholic support for the campaign of violence and scored a number of surprise victories. Meanwhile, in the border town of Newry, the primary school whose headmaster was gunned down by terrorists three days ago has reopened amid concern over the effects of the shooting on the children. As nine o'clock approach, the answer seemed positive, though parents are worried about traumatic after effects. You know, he won't, it, it, when it happened, you know, he won't leave me at all, you know. I mean, I can't get him to. Was he in the class? I mean, he, no, he wasn't no, in the no. class. He wasn't no, in the no, class. No. It's just, you know, a re reaction of everybody else. <laughs> hey, Frank, will you go? Go on, that's a good guy. Come on, Sean. <laughs> Come on. Still, the school assembly was at about its normal level, and the handful of children who had been taken to hospital on Monday in hysterics were all present here saying their prayers. So now this primary school tries to forget one of the most appalling terrorist acts of recent times. And the inescapable fact is that the INLA gunman who shot down Mr Wright chose to do it in front of these children. The Chamberlain murder trial and the defence completed its case today in the Darwin Supreme Court, exactly six weeks after the hearing started. Last to give evidence was Michael Chamberlain, who was in the witness stand for more than six hours. Michael Chamberlain spent the morning under searching cross-examination by Prosecution Counsel Ian Barker, QC. Mr Chamberlain repeatedly denied assertions by Mr Barker that the dingo story was false. Mr. Barker asked Mr. Chamberlain why he hadn't joined in the search for Azaria the morning after she disappeared. Mr. Barker said there must have been a slim chance she was alive. Mr. Chamberlain replied simply, miraculous. Mr. Barker rejoined, you believe in miracles, don't you? And Mr. Chamberlain replied, yes, but I'm also a realist. This afternoon, Victorian pathologist Dr. Vernon Plukan returned to the witness box. He's described as completely unfounded evidence given by British forensic expert Professor James Cameron that Azaria's throat was cut. But under cross-examination, Dr. Plukan said he could not exclude a cut throat as the cause of death. However, Dr. Plukan said marks on Azaria's jumpsuit could not, in his wildest imagination, be impressions of a blood-stained human hand. In Darwin, Paul White, Seven National News. The petrol price war has flared again in Melbourne, among the stories still to come in Seven National News.